It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Today, a very special Science Bowl. The last of the middle school games this school year. We front loaded the competition. We started with 12 middle schools. We're down to the final two. Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert Goddard Montessori vying today for the county championship. Things have changed this season. As you notice, so much has been on Zoom, as are we. Our students are home. I'm here in the studio. and. Uh, I'll be asking each of the teams today 18 questions, and at the end, the top score will be the winner. They will be the county champ. Something hasn't changed, and that is the category, the choice of categories that we have here on the Science Bowl. And these are those familiar choices. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems. We'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing, and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. In each of those categories, we have a five-point question, a 15-point question, and a 25-point question. Easy to medium difficulty to the toughest of them all. And uh, we'll be going through the first nine questions with our Martin Luther King team. Then we'll bring in the Robert Goddard team and then do the flip-flop, do the last nine questions after we talk to our students for just a few moments. So play along, see if you can keep up with these great kids. And boy, they are elite students all, as you are about to see. All right, it's time now to meet the team from Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School. Let's say hello to Martin and Kelvin and Kevin. All right, Martin Luther King. You have 50 points already. We always do that. You never lose anything for making a, a choice. So uh, let's begin our game. Good luck. Here are your green things questions. The five point question. American colonists protested British rule by throwing crates of these caffeinated leaves into Boston Harbor. Tea. Tea. Tea, yeah, the Boston Tea Party. Got yourself five points. Good start, guys. Next, for 15 points in green things. Some insects don't play fair. Getting a free lunch of nectar from flowers by piercing the nectary at the bottom of the sepals and thus not doing what for the plant? We're going to take a minute to talk about this. I think it's pollinating. It's yeah, pollinating. Because most... Uh, the insects that don't do this are they pollinate the plant. So, all right. Yeah. All right. So, Martin and Kelvin both jumped right in and said pollinate. Pollinating is the right answer. Yes. The insects get dusted with the pollen as they head inside. So, they are not playing fair. 25 point question in green things. If birds seem to be walking around or flying erratically, it could be that they have eaten berries and fruits that have undergone this F initial process and are thus inebriated, a.k.a. drunk. We're going to take a minute to talk about this. I think it's fermentation. Yeah, yeah. fermentation. They're fermented. They yes. are fermented, indeed. Thank you, Kevin, too, for weighing in. You guys are all pulling your weight today. Let's go into the zoo questions for five points. In the Harry Potter stories... Mail is delivered by Hedwig, one of these wise birds whose wings make no sound when flapping. Owl. 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 Yeah, owl. Hedwig was the owl. Yes, indeed. Great character. Here's a visual question for you for your 15-point question in the zoo parade category. The Japanese giant salamander, looks like a dinosaur, is thought to be the largest one of these kinds of creatures in the world, a group that includes frogs. We're going to take a minute to talk about this. I think it's amphibians. Yeah, yeah amphi it's amphibians. amphibians. That is indeed the largest amphibian in the world. Last question for you in the zoo for 25 points. 
When chameleons change the color of their skin, as they are renowned to do, it can be for a variety of reasons. I'll give you 25 points if you can give me two valid reasons why a chameleon would change its color. There are serious. a number of them. I need two that are valid. I mean, the I know one of them is camouflage. The other and one's temperature change. I've heard they like change. I think it's like temperature change or their surrounding colors. Temperature change, I think, is also one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So camouflage and temperature regulation. The other one is they actually communicate with each other. If they're angry, they turn red and that communicates their anger and their ire. Good answer. All right. Okay. Martin and Kevin and Kelvin, here are your three body system questions before we go and take a little bit of a break here. Body systems for five points. Julius Caesar, a renowned speaker, famously said, and I quote, friends, Romans, countrymen, Lend me your what? Where did I take a minute to talk about this? I think it's arms? No, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's ears. Yeah, I ears? think it's I believe it's ears. It's either ears or, yeah, I think it's ears. I'm going to go ears? with ears. I'm not sure, so I think we should go with ears. It is ears. Lend me your ears. He's a speaker. Listen to me. Good. Like you're doing to me. Body system for 15 points. We're all now used to having our temperature being taken by those exergen temporal thermometers that can detect what form of radiation. I'm going to take a minute to talk about this. I think it's heat. Or, yeah, I think, I don't know for sure, but. Um, heat, I don't think it's, I well, think so. Is heat, if it's measuring temperature, then. Well, heat is a form of radiate. Radiation is a form of heat. That's true. So um, I'm going to stay with heat. What are you going with, Kevin? I mean, it's either heat or infrared. Inf no, infrared it would help you like. That's not radi- I, I think heat, but is but heat's not really. It's, well, it's not UV. All right. We, I think okay. We just need it. Martin, heat. what is your answer, please? Heat radiation. Um, heat. Uh, you should have gone with Kevin. It is infrared. It is infrared that they're picking up, which is heat. All right, let's go to the 25-point question in body systems. Unlike horses and pigs, which walk on their hooves, and cats and dogs that walk on their, their toes, we humans are considered plantigrade creatures, P-L-A-N-T-I-D-R-A-D-E, -E, creatures because like bears, we walk how? Um, I'm thinking to talk about this. I think it's on our feet because yeah. hind yeah. legs are like our leg feet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I think we should go with hind. Yeah. I think we should go with hind legs. I think I've heard this question. Well, do bears, well, bears can walk on all fours on, on, on their hind legs. Well, we only have, um, you think it's feet or I think um, it's, it's either heat, feet or hind legs. And I'm thinking hind legs because I'm thinking hind legs. I think I've heard this question before. Okay. Kevin. Weigh in before we ask Martin to give an answer. Um, Martin, well, what's the answer two, for the team? Um, their hind legs are the two legs. Hind legs are two legs. Actually, it's on the whole foot. Some are on their toes. Some are, but bears, like us, that's why when you see prints in the snow, you see that whole foot there. So we walk on our whole foot, not on our hooves or on our toes. All right, we come to the end of your first nine questions. That means you end this opening round here, Martin Luther King, with 145. Very good work. All right, it's now time to meet the team from Robert Goddard Montessori. Let's say hello to Nathan and Grayson and Mason. Again, you're starting out with 50 points, and I have nine questions for you in this first half. The first questions come from the green things category. Gentlemen, if you're ready, let's begin. When a fox is cornered at the end of a branch with lots of hounds at the base having chased it up there, the word to describe his situation, the fox's situation, other than perilous, is this familiar green thing with a D added at the end. Treed. Treed is right. Yes, he has been treed. Next, for 15 points, Velcro. That thing that always makes it sound like you're ripping something. 
Velcro was invented by Georges de Mistral. He noted that how these B initial plant parts stuck to his pants and his dog's Burs. fur when he went hiking. Burrs. 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 Yeah. It took someone with a great power of observation to say, hey, wait a minute, Dick. It's just some commercial value to that. Nice going, guys. Next, for 25 points, visual question for you in green things. One of the winners in this year's annual Nikon camera photography contest was an extreme close-up of these flower parts covered with pollen. I will take a minute to talk. Yeah, I'll you can a indeed. About this. Okay, so what's so, the part that has the pollen? Is it stamens? I think it might be the the filament because I mean, filament, the, do you think? Isn't that what holds up? Uh, it's called the stamen. The stamen has okay. the filament and the anthers. Uh, right. Well, which is which is the one of the outsides, the filaments or the anthers? Both of them are called together the. Um, the stamen. Should we just go with stamen then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna. Okay, go we're with gonna stamen. go with stamen. Yeah. Uh, actually, you saw the anthers there. The anthers <sighs> pop the filaments on the stamen. So you guys are going back and forth. You'll get them next time. Here's the zoo parade question. Five points. Small elephants that have been determined to belong to a separate species from other elephants are described by what adjective that also describes a tribe of very small people in Central Africa? Pygmy. Pygmies. Yeah, the pygmy elephants, you got it. Next, for 15 points in zoo, an animatronic version of this clever mammal, one of the ocean's top predators and the largest of the dolphins, was used in the movie Free Willy. It's a killer whale or, or an orca whale. whale. Killer whale or orca is correct. Next, I have a visual for you for 25 points in Zoo Parade. If you've ever been to the campus of the University of Maryland, you'll recognize this because students there know that if they rub Testudo's nose, he's the school mascot there at Maryland, it's supposed to bring you good luck. Well, if Testudo could talk, he might like it if the kids also rubbed, rubbed his belly, which is known as the carapace the plastron, or the breastplate? I think- It could be the breastplate, right? Guys? Right, yeah, breastplate. it would be the breastplate yeah, makes the carapace, sense. Well, the carapace the is carapace the top. Here? Okay, carapace is the top. What's the second one? Plastron. 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 Uh, do you know that word? No. Um, I'm not okay. familiar with that, no. So should we breastplate go with breastplate? Sounds right. Yeah, yeah okay. let's go with breastplate. breastplate. Uh, actually, it was the one in the center. It is the plastron that is the underside of a turtle. All right, guys, let's do the body system questions for five points. If you've climbed a steep set of stairs and you're not used to doing that, you might have to take a moment to catch your what? Breath. Breath. Catch your breath, that's right. All right, for 15 points, for many years, it was thought that these painful U-initialed stomach lesions were caused by spicy food or stress. Ulcers. It's an ulcers, ulcers, right? Ulcers. Ulcers. Yeah, I was going to absolutely. We now know that they're caused by bacterium, which was a huge revelation and won a Nobel Prize for its discoverers. For 25 points, glaucoma, which damages the optic nerve, also causes the loss of this indirect outside vision that lets you know that is something is happening outside what you're fixated on. What peripheral kind of peripheral vision, vision is that? Peripheral vision. Peripheral vision. Peripheral vision. It is peripheral for 25 points. That's the way to do it. That means, gentlemen, you end this round, a good round for you with 135 points. Good job. Good morning, good morning. amazing team members from Robert Goddard and Martin Luther King. How are you all today? I know I'm interrupting right before the very last round. And I was able to watch the last one and even learn something about the Maryland Terrapin Turtle. So I know that you all are going to be fabulous in this last round. And as far as I'm concerned, you're both winners, though I know there has to be one so that you can walk around with that coveted award, but know that I'm rooting for both of you. And as far as we're concerned, you both are, are, are our prize winners. So thank you all for participating. Mr. Z, thank you for all that you do for Science Bowl in the many years and for making it go from live to virtual. We are not letting anything stop us. So thank you all so much. And I'm going to stick around and watch this last round. Thank you, Dr. Golson. And it means a lot that you joined us here today. And we are looking at the best of the best here. And like you say, nobody loses on this game. They are all ambassadors for their schools. And uh, we couldn't be more proud of them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we ask any more science questions, a few personal ones of these three outstanding young men and uh, the Martin Luther King team. 
I should mention, they are the defending champions and they have medals from last year. And Kelvin, who is new to Martin Luther King, was on the winning Bond Mill team last year. So he has a medal as well. So we are talking about med like Olympic medalists you guys are here. Martin, you're our captain this year. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, tell us what it is you really like to do with your dad because you like it outside. Um, I, what I really like to do with my dad is um, each summer we normally go hiking on the Appalachian Trail or I've even went biking once with him on the CNO Canal. I just really like spending time with my dad outside in nature for a few days. I really enjoy that. Well, uh, I, you know, it is the best therapy, especially when we're locked down and even people, doctors will tell you, get outside. That is the best antidote to all of this isolation here. And you've told us already that you have your eyes set on what kind of profession? Um, I'd like to be an engineer because I think it involves a lot of math and science and also problem solving, which I all, which I like all of them a lot. So I think that'd be a good profession for me. I like how you think. You take your time and your discipline and you check with everybody there. And a nice shout out to your coach, Miss Elizabeth Butler, who has been doing this for many, many years. And Miss Robin Prince, your principal out there. Uh, you guys have really done a super job in this tournament here. Let's go to Kelvin. Kelvin, I was singing your praises there a moment ago last year. Your signature line is, we have to talk about that. Give us a minute. And you know, that's a good ploy because it lets you slow down and think, what do you like about this game? I just, I really like science, and after I did it last year, it just seems like something I would want to do in middle school, so I decided to join, and I'm very happy that I did. And we're very happy that you're with us. And tell us about your professional goals. I want to be an electrical engineer and a software designer because I really like video games, and I also really like creating things and fixing things, so I want to be an electrical engineer. So your talent is aimed towards something that uh, you're gonna be successful at. And if you like it, that's what life is all about. If you're good at it and you like it, boy, you're gonna have a great time, uh, outstanding young man. Kevin, nice to have you with us today. I know you had a few problems getting online today. You know, I heard someone, a little girl the other day say she was tired of Zoom. She called it poopy Zoom. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little frustrating, but we got it all figured out. Kevin, tell me about yourself. How do you know so much science? Because you do. Um, I pay attention in class. You pay attention in class, and what else? Um, I, I know you like to read, and I know you like to stay online, and you're obviously picking up a lot of things. You're a quiet young man, but you know your stuff, and you're a great mm -hmm. asset to the team here. All right. All right, gentlemen, we head to the finale here. Your last nine questions, if you're ready. Here are the three, let's get physical questions. You guys set? Yes. Guys? All right, good. You're doing a great job. Let's get physical for five points. Two-part answer. Which two of the following physical changes, as opposed to chemical changes, are represented here? Which of the, two fo which of the following are physical changes as opposed to chemical changes? Boiling an egg, making cake batter, and freezing water. Which two of those three would be considered physical changes? Boiling an egg, making cake batter, freezing water. Um, I think it's freezing water. Well, I think it's freezing water. It's definitely yeah, freezing water. Yeah, because that just changes the state of matter. It's definitely freezing water. Um, I think boiling an egg would also be one because you're just changing it from being technically yeah. a liquid inside to a solid. Making cake batter. You are making... mixing several ingredients, which will turn into something new, but. I don't think that's considered a physical change. Now, when you boil an egg, does the egg like. It does change forms. Like it becomes, it goes. But I don't think it actually changes its chemical composition. No, because then it would be a chemical change. So I think it's, Kevin, what do you think? Um, is it freezing water? Yeah, freezing water. Yeah, is freezing yeah. water. And we think boiling an egg. Yeah. You don't um, think... 
All right, if that, that's your answer. Um, uh, Kevin was shaking his head there uh, for good reason because uh, boiling an egg does change everything chemically. You can't turn it backwards. You can't unboil an egg. But making cake batter is just a physical change. Now, baking a cake is a chemical change, but just mixing the batter is a physical change. Try this next one, guys. This is a 15-point question in Let's Get Physical. You know, drinking seawater, even though you're surrounded by seawater, you can't drink a drop because it will kill us because it overwhelms our kidneys. But seawater can be made potable. You can drink it if you have a heat source to vaporize it and then collect the droplets formed by what process? We're going to take, take a second to talk about this. I think it's condensation. Yeah, yeah condensation. Condensation it is, good answer, 15 points. All right, for 25 points. Upper atmosphere lightning that causes light shows known as sprites and elves, they've even seen that above Jupiter, can be seen from Earth occurring in this high initial layer of the atmosphere. Uh, we're gonna take a second to talk about this. Ionosphere. Um, I think it's the ionosphere. Ionosphere. The ionosphere. ionosphere. That's it. Well, you all weighed in. You got those 25 points. That's the way to do it, guys. Ionosphere is correct. Let's go to the potpourri category. All right, this is kind of a fun question. The scientists on the Mythbusters TV program show that it is possible to go camping. You've gone camping, Martin, to go camping with just a few rolls of this kind of adhesive tape for which they made hammocks clothes, and even a tent. What kind of adhesive tape could be used to make all of those things? Um, we're going to take a, take a second to talk about this. Is it duct tape? I would I think, think it's duct tape. I think it's duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> duct yeah. tape. That's, what <laughs> can't you do with duct tape? Absolutely. Yeah, that is, that, when I saw the tent they made out of duct tape, that was just, I, yeah. That was a pure bit of engineering. All right, let's do the 15-point question in potpourri. A human skeleton is predictably spooky, especially at, ha at Halloween. But a skeleton also has a humorous side with this so-called bone, sometimes called the funny bone. We're going to take a second to talk about this. Um, is it your... Funny. It's one of holding your arm. Uh, um, is it the radius or there's the other? I think it's the rate. I forget if the radius is the lower one or. Well, I think it's, it's the radius because you know radius. Like, you have yep. your elbow. Yeah, one of them's called your radius. I think it's well, the radius. Uh, actually, guys, you had to go up a little higher. It's the long bone at the top here, and it's called the humerus bone. H u m e r u s, not h u m. O U R S as you would say, O R O U S as that's why it's called the funny bone because it sounds like it's humorous. Let's try the 25 point question in potpourri. And it is a multiple choice question and it is a visual. And you've probably heard the phrase, boy, it's raining cats and dogs. Well, in Florida last winter, it was iguana lizards falling from the sky. Here you can see one, he looks dead. Actually, these iguanas fell from trees as the temperature dropped because they are poikilothermic or cold-blooded. Another way of describing a cold-blooded creature like the iguana, and this iguana, by the way, did come to later, is ectothermic, endothermic, or hyperthermic. We're going to take a second to talk about this. I think it's... Ecto, well... endo, or hyper, a cold-blooded creature like an iguana. I think it's ecto because they release a lot of heat. I think, yeah, it is ectothermic because since they're cold-blooded, they don't make the heat themselves. They have to get it from an outside source, which yes. ecto means out and thermic means heat, so ectothermic. Okay. Ecto Beautiful answer. Beautiful it is. You got yourself 25 points. Excellent. All right, guys, I have three more questions for you. Stay with me. You're on a roll. Here we go. Dateline for five points. One of the last hurricanes this past season had an appropriate name, starting with the last letter in our alphabet, and it is the fifth letter of the Greek alphabet. Wait a minute, it takes a second to talk about this. I think it's Z. Honest, I don't know. I think it's Z. Um, so, the, well, the last letter of our alphabet is Z, mm -hmm. and what's the one in the Greek alphabet? Do any of you, you think... I I think it's Z. I think it's Z. I don't. You've heard of Z? I, I've heard um, of Z. I think it's Zeta. 
Yes, it's Wait, Zeta. 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 It's yeah, Zeta. 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 Your eye, all of your That's eyes it. just lit up. Your eyes That's lit up it. because of Kevin. It is Zeta, five points. Thank you, Kevin. You go to the head of the class. For 15 points in Dateline, guys, the blue moon in October, the second full moon in that month, was also called a micro moon because it was at this farthest point in its orbit, 31,000 miles away from Earth. That position is known as this, the opposite of the perigee. The farthest point in the moon's orbit, farthest from Earth, is known as this term, the opposite of the perigee, which means when it is closest to the Earth. We're going to take a second to talk about this. I think it's called the blue moon. I mean, but well, no, he now... said blue moon. We have to name what's the opposite of perigee. It probably still. Uh, does anybody know what the opposite of like the root pair? No. Perry. Um, no. What is para? What does para mean though? I, th I think it's Our, blue moon. I don't. Well, it can't be blue moon, but um, Kevin, any ideas? I Correct mean, answer here, guys. The opposite of perigee is apogee. A-P-O-G-E-E, -E, apogee. Try the 25-point question. Last question for you in the game. It's a two-part answer. Galileo famously dropped two objects of different weight from this iconic Italian landmark. That's the first part I'll need. Proving that gravitational what is constant at 32 feet per second squared. We're going to take a second to talk about this. I okay. think the first one is Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yes. yes, and then I think it's gra gravitational pull. Gravitational Except pull? Yes. Yeah, because um, that's the Earth's pull on an object towards the center. The gravitational pull. Yeah, okay. Kevin, what do you think? Give me another word for pull, please. Attraction? Uh, attraction. Um, um, horse? Kevin, yeah. wait, what did you say? Horse? Horse? Force, force, gravitational force. Uh, I think so. I don't know. Um, you guys are dancing around it. It is gravitational acceleration. Gravitational acceleration is 32 feet per second squared. All right. Still a good round for you. End the game with 220 points, Martin Luther King. It's now time to meet the team from Robert Goddard Montessori and find out a little bit more about them before we ask them their last nine questions. Let's go to the captain and Nathaniel. Uh, Hello. Here you are. It is deja vu. Last year, <laughs> Robert Goddard, Martin Luther King, and is there a little bit of uh, we're going to get them this time feeling? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it happens in sport all the time. And, you know, it's time for a little bit of revenge. Well, you guys are doing well, uh, but Martin Luther King always does well. So uh, good luck in this second half here. Tell people uh, a little bit about your school. What do you like best about Robert Goddard Montessori? I think the best part is that there's not as many students, so each student can have some individual help from teachers, so we get to know our teachers well, and that helps Isn't us that learn. Important? That is so important. You know, uh, everyone's different. Everyone learns at a different pace, and you know, teachers that can accommodate that, have the time to accommodate that, that makes for just a wonderful school. And someday, you're going to do what? Uh, I'm going to become an engineer for NASA. I like designing things. Wow, I can just imagine that. Uh, I was just uh, reading about the astronauts that they sent up to the International Space Station. First time it's since oh, yeah. 2011, the U.S. could do that. And you're going to be there to make sure that America has more space triumphs to celebrate. Uh, you're a great, great player, great young man. Nice to have you here. Let's talk to your colleagues here. And let's talk next to Mason. Mason, uh, your dog has been quiet over there. Is, is he your good luck charm? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't, I guess, yeah, definitely, I'd say that. <laughs> I know last time he was chasing squirrels out there. He was making a racket. He wanted yep. some FaceTime. He was jealous that you were, you were the star that day. Tell yeah. us about yourself. What do you want to do someday? Uh, I think I'd like to be a chef. That would be cool. Yeah, it would be cool because we all got to eat. And yep. a chef told me once, and you might agree with this, that you eat with your eyes. It's so true. If it looks good. You're going to dig in, but I don't care how nutritious it is. If it doesn't have that appearance, what do you like to make now? Do you have a specialty? Um, I like to make um, burgers and uh, other sandwiches. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. Everyone is a, is a burger fan, even if it's a tofu burger. You know, yeah. everyone puts something on a bun. 
Good luck here in the second half, young man. Great player. And Grayson, nice to have you with us today. Grayson, where are you sitting today? You look like you're in something from Star Wars. Well, I'm in my, uh, my spaceship and currently orbiting <laughs> Mars. Um, <laughs> we were right. We were right. Like no, I'm said. in my, uh, my uh, parents' bedroom because nice. they're, they're all out there. Yeah. No, I like the color of the walls there, that, uh, that lilac color there. Tell me about yourself. Uh, uh, what, is you, what do you like to do in your spare time? Well, I like to um, I like to practice different instruments. I've been kind of like practicing the guitar, piano, saxophone, um, trying to learn the harmonica as well. It's a, it's a fun hobby. Not 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 to pun it too much, but you are a one man band. Uh, uh, do you play in an orchestra or a band? <laughs> yeah, I do play in a a band at my school, but that's great. Yeah, that's pretty great. much it. It's kind of different that's, now. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Of course, I've seen uh, the New York Philharmonic on Zoom, and they're all playing Ravel's Bolero, and it's just perfect. Somehow, they're all in sync. Do you want to be a professional mu musician someday? No, I think maybe something like, I like both of the options that Nathan and Mason gave. Like, I love cooking, and I also like engineering and stuff, like, because I'm good with my hands as well. I like to uh, also build Legos in my spare time. Wow, all the STEM subjects involved in that too. And a little bit of the STEAM, the A, the arts when it comes to cooking. If you're ready, it's now time to go to the let's get physical questions. Three of them for five points, here we go. The Tampa Bay Rays baseball team has changed its mascot. Instead of a manta ray, it is now a ray of sunshine. A ray of sunshine is composed of its 50% infrared radiation, 40% visible light, and 10% of this kind of radiation that can burn. Ultraviolet. Yeah, ultraviolet. UV, UV is right. For 15 points. If you have natural gas to heat your home, and now that it's getting colder, yeah, we're all worried about that. Natural gas is mostly this smelly gas with small amounts of propane, ethane, and butane mixed in. Let's what talk about this for a second. The smelly yeah, gas up most of natural gas. It's methane, right? I think it's methane, yeah. I don't think it's CO2. That wouldn't make sense. I think it's methane. Okay, let's go methane. with methane. It's methane, that's right. It contains uh, sulfur. It smells like rotten cabbage. Yeah. Next, that's the mercaptan they put in. That's to let you know that there is a gas leak. The 25-point question, and let's get physical, gentlemen. If someone is placed in a hyperbaric chamber, H-Y-P-E-R, B-A-R-I-C, a hyperbaric chamber, it's because they need more oxygen than the nor the than the air normally produces. How is the inside of the chamber different from the normal atmosphere? Uh, I'm pretty sure it has more pressure. Yeah, I was gonna say something. Because I've heard the word thermobaric in a thing and it was Just about crushing about... fireball. So what do you think about pressure, guys? Because I have Person, what were it. you gonna say? I was thinking higher pressure, or lower pressure, something to do like that because barrack um, it has the same prefix as barometer, which I think measures the air yeah. pressure. I'd say it's higher pressure. Let's go with yeah. higher pressure. All right. It higher is pressure. higher pressure. Yeah, because it if is. it's hyper, Excellent. hyper would be higher. 25 points. You got it. Good group think there, guys. Let's go to the potpourri questions. For five points. The oldest human skeleton, that of a female found by paleontologists in 1974 in Ethiopia, was given a scientific name, Australopithecus. But she's better known by this L-initialed girl's name. It's Lucy. Lucy. That's right, because of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, because of the Beatles song at the time. I was also going to tell you the, the character in Peanuts that forever torments Charlie Brown. Let's go to 15 points in Potpourri. Don't mess with Mother Nature. Yeah, scientist Robert Payne, when he removed all the starfish from a tidal pool, all of a sudden... The urchins that they used to eat overpopulated. Then all of these mussels came in. Then the algae population crashed. What happened was he ruined that food web by removing the starfish. The starfish were what kind of K-initialed species that held up and held together the entire food web. It is the same word that is the nickname for the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, okay, let's take a moment to discuss. Mason, got anything here? Uh, I'm kind of drawing a blank here. Okay. This is a K initial species. Uh, okay. The, the nickname for Pennsylvania? The nickname for Pennsylvania? Yeah. The, what, the K, K, K state? Uh, what does that? Anyone? Uh, uh, 
Is it? Oh, I got it! 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 It's Keystone. Oh. Oh. I oh. Okay. I, I remember because my parents went to my parents good. went to university in Pennsylvania. Hey, good job. And if you were following the election returns when they called it for Biden, they were talking about it being the Keystone State. It is the Keystone. Mason, good thing your parents went to school in Pennsylvania there. Got yourself those points. Wonderful. 15. All right. For 25 points in potpourri, what same word names the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean, the blank deep, and the space shuttle that exploded in 1986 that carried the first teacher into space, Krista McCullough? Challenger. It's a challenger. Challenger deep. It is the Challenger deep, and it is it was the Challenger space shuttle. Chris McAuliffe uh, taught here with us, Thomas Johnson Middle School, um, one of our heroines. Dateline's questions. Here it is for five points. Our moon looks more and more promising as a human outpost because astronomers have found vast fields of ice that could provide what two critical chemical elements to future astronauts. Hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen. Yeah, yeah hydrogen. And yeah, oxygen. hydrogen. Hydrogen and oxygen. Absolutely right. That could be used to make fuel to use it as a launch pad to farther out in the solar system. Excellent. For 15 points, this is interesting. It's been observed that when vampire bats get sick, they do get sick. They obviously don't and can't wear masks, but they do practice this, as we've been told to do during COVID, to keep from infecting other bats. Social distancing. I think That's we all right. know that they one socially point. distance. Yes. Somehow they know to do that. Many animals do that. If they're sick, they separate themselves from the rest of the herd so as not to contaminate everybody. Last question of the game. 25 points in Dateline. It was in 1543, on his deathbed, that this Polish astronomer published his theory that the sun was a motionless body in the center of our solar system, that the planet revolved around it. Before that, the Earth was thought to be in the center. It's Copernicus. It is Nicholas Copernicus. Copernicus. Absolutely right. Robert Goddard, fantastic round for you. One that means, Robert Goddard, you end this round with 270 points. Congratulations. Well, we knew it was going to be a contested game. We knew it was going to be close. It was going to be as close as this election here. It could have gone either way. But with a score of 270 points, Robert Goddard Montessori, the first time ever that they are county champs. Let's give them a nice round of applause. And Martin Luther King, what a great defending champ. You still have seven county championships that you can brag about 220 points today. We congratulate our coaches and our principals. Miss Prince is here from Martin Luther King. This is her first year, and boy, this is something she can really brag about. She's a great scientist herself. And Miss Butler, you have been in the winner's circle so many times, and you are here again today. We have gold medals like these that we'll be giving to each of the members of the Robert Goddard Montessori team. And we have silver medals for all of the members of the team from Martin Luther King. So of all the middle schools in Prince George's County that played 12, you were the final two. You were the best of the best. We congratulate you guys. And uh, those of you that are still in seventh grade, I hope you come back and play next year. And those of you that are out there watching, I hope you continue to watch us because we have the elementary school competition coming up next on Zoom, on YouTube, and on channels 96 and 38. Hope to see you there. Thanks, guys, and congratulations to everybody. Let's wave to everybody at home. <laughs>